My name is Jessica Langley and I'm going to show you how to make paper with mushrooms. When you're ready to begin, you're going to want to make sure that you have a work surface that's able to be messy. Please don't use your antique heirloom furniture for this because it's a very messy process it's a very, and it's a very wet process. When you're ready to begin, you're going to want to gather all your tools. These include rags, a blender that you don't mind if it burns out on you. So don't use your $400 Vitamix. Go to a thrift store and find one for $5 because these may or may not burn out once the motor gets going. You'll need a mold and deckel, which I'll explain in a minute. You'll need a rubber tub, which will contain all of the slurry. Obviously, you're gonna need mushrooms. I also recommend having cheesecloth on hand, a spray bottle, and maybe a rag or a sponge. And lastly, you'll need a non-porous surface like glass, or you can even wrap tin foil around a piece of cardboard. And that's going to be what you dry your paper out on. In Western style paper making, the hand mold and deckel is simply two wooden frames of the same size. This one happens to fit neatly inside the other, and I bought this at a local craft supply store. But you can also make them yourself using scrap wood and window screen. This is, uh, these are both the same size, and the mold is the piece that's called, that has the screen around it. And this is a window screen that I wrapped tightly and stapled to the back of the, uh, um, the frame. And the deckle, when placed on top of the screen and pulled through the slurry, is what forms the edge of the paper. You can actually make your deckle any shape that you want um, by using duct tape. So you can put duct tape, cut it out, and make a stencil into any other kind of shape, like a mushroom, for example. Now, your rags, um, are gonna be what you transfer the wet slurry onto. And you wanna make sure that these are large enough to fit the, um, the, uh, the mold and also smooth enough to not have too much um, tooth to them. So you don't wanna use um, things like terry cloth, um, but some nice dish rags are fine. And your rubber tub, you wanna make sure um, can actually fit your hands and the mold and deckle comfortably um, without too much uh, tension there. Also your non-porous surfaces, you wanna make sure will actually fit your molded deckle neatly, and those can come in any size. Once you've gathered all your tools, you're gonna to want material to work with also. Um, in traditional paper making, the pulp is made of a lignocellulosic material that is either chemically or um, manually uh, drawn from the source. So mostly it's from wood, um, which is what traditional like news newspaper, magazines, um, and even toilet paper is made from. Um, it can also be derived from cotton, which is what most fine art papers are made out of. But obviously we're here to talk about mushrooms. I've found that polypores work the best. Um, so these include everything from turkey tail to red belt polypore. But there's many other types of mushrooms that work, or many other types of polypores that work. I've just found that polypores that are pliable when fresh work the best. Um, some can be too hard and some can be too soft. So most guild mushrooms are a little too soft to be working with, with um, paper making. Um, and then some like chaga are way too hard and they'll just absolutely break your blender. Um, and um, depending on the type of mushroom that you use, you can get different colors of paper. So obviously lighter color, um, like turkey tail or Piptoporus betulinus, the birch polypore, will give you some lighter color uh, paper. The red belt polypore, or Fomatopsis pinicola, um, which has a sort of um, more orangey color, will give you some um, sort of brown paper. And then other papers like, I think it's Styrium, or other mushrooms like uh, Styrium hirsutum have almost like a purplish hue to them when, um, when made into paper. So there's a wide range of mushrooms to use. And here's a list that I've found work wonderful for um, paper making. These mushrooms work really well because they have a high chitin content. And chitin is the biological polymer that makes up the cell walls of fungi which is similar to cellulose, which is the key ingredient in plant-based paper. 
When you're out in the woods looking for mushrooms, you're gonna find polypores of various sizes and densities. Obviously, turkey tail is small and pliable and works really wonderful. It also dries out really quickly, um, so you can save these um, for later use pretty uh, easily. Red belt polypores, on the other hand, are very hard and very large. You can dry these out for later use, but when it comes time to actually make your paper, you're gonna to need to have small pieces that you put into your blender. You can cut the polypores up while they're fresh using a utility knife, um, or if you dry it out, like this one is pretty tough already, I would need to soak this for maybe overnight in order to make sure that that um, material is very pliable. Right now this is too hard and I would never wanna just put this in the blender because it would break the blender. So while this is soft, once the polypore is soft, you can cut it into small pieces and either dry those out for preservation um, or later use, or um, you can soak the, soak the materials um, for a little while until they're nice and squishy or pliable. So these are ready to go right into the blender. Now I've already started with a batch of stock that's gonna go into my slurry. This slurry is pretty thick. Um, I've already loaded a few blenderfuls into my tub, but we're gonna add a little bit more stock here because we want it to be nice thick paper. The amount of stock that you put into your slurry is directly related to how thick the paper will be. So the more stock that you have in the slurry, the thicker the paper, the more you pull out of the slurry, the thinner the paper will become. So we're gonna give this a blend. So when you add your mushrooms into the blender, your soft, pliable, soaked mushrooms into the blender, you're gonna need to add water um, in order to get um, enough uh, looseness in the blender. So once that's nice and um, ground up, we're gonna add this into the stock. But the first thing that I'll do, and I'll probably go through this process three or four times, is run it through a cheesecloth. And that's gonna help me uh, to catch all of the really big chunks that maybe the blender hasn't quite um, processed yet. So you have to do a little bit of like finger acrobatics to make a little pouch. And we're gonna try to pour the spout of the blender in through the cheesecloth. So then I'll just give this a nice squeeze. And if some of the slurry sneaks through, that's okay. But what this is getting is all of the really, really tiny fibers. Um, that'll help to make a kind of a nicer, a finer paper. My preference is for nice, really thick, juicy paper with lots of texture. So I actually prefer a lot of pulp in my papers. So once I've squeezed out that water, I'm gonna add this back into the blender and run through this process three or four times um, before I'm ready to pull my paper. And once I make sure that I have enough stock for, or enough slurry for pulling the paper. Once I've got that nice burning smell from the motor of the blender, I'm gonna stop using the blender. Luckily, it's ready to add into the bath. So I've gone through the cheesecloth several times um, I know that I've pretty much gotten all of the big chunks ground down, and I'll just pour this straight into the slurry and set that aside. And now we're ready to pull some paper. When you're ready to pull your paper you, um, on the molded deco, you're gonna make sure that you wanna have a stack of rags that are dry and pretty clean, um, and then also your non-porous surface, and then obviously your slurry. So the slurry, should be pretty thick, and I'm gonna give it a nice stir. 
So once that slurry is nice and stirred up, all those fibers are suspended. You're gonna grab the mold and deco really tightly, making sure those are pressed very firmly against each other, and then you're just gonna dunk it in, making sure you get it underneath, and then bringing it out very level. I'm gonna give it a little jiggle. We wanna just make sure those fibers are dispersed very evenly on the screen. So giving it a little jiggle, we're gonna let all that water drip out. Just give my deck a little, a little clean it off here. Can pull the decal off, set it aside, and you'll see how that's formed the edges of the paper. And you can also see that that paper is nice and thick. And we're ready to move on to the Cushing process. The Cushing process is when we transfer the paper onto the towel. And this requires a little finesse. And this process involves kind of pressing in one edge of the mold and then keeping a firm pressure and then gradually and lifting it up on the other side. So again, that's kind of pressing in one end and then maintaining that pressure and then in a kind of a wave-like motion, you're gonna lift it up. So it's, it's sort of this motion. So I'll grab hold of the back sides of the mold and I'm gonna apply pressure to one side And then as I've transferred it, I'm gonna just gradually lift up on the other side. You can see how it just nicely falls off of that mold. If you have troubles in this process, don't worry because you can always scrape off the pulp from the mold and dump it back into your slurry and do this process as many times as you want. Just making sure that you always have a dry rag to um, push it onto. So from here, we need to transfer it to the, the glass. So I'm just gonna kind of pick it up and move it over. And this can kind of get the paper to be a little bit of funky shape actually. So you might wanna just sort of be a little careful about not distorting the size of the, or the paper shape too much. And then I'm just gonna flip it over and lay it down. and then give it a little pressure on one end, and then we can just roll it up. It might need a little bit of help to get it to stick to the glass. Once we get that edge started, it'll roll up really nice. So that edge is started, and then I just kind of give a little bit of pressure, and then roll that rag back. And there we go. And now I can just let it dry there. And with the magic of television, I have one already dried. And once you've let, let it dry, and you can let it dry in the sun um, or just in a room, but you wanna make sure that there's enough airflow to, um, to the space so that it doesn't get moldy. So if you're in a part of the country where it's really hot and humid, sometimes it's pretty moldy. But out here in Colorado, I can just let this out in the sun for a couple hours and it dries pretty nicely. If you have trouble um, getting it off the glass, you can use a nice paint scraper to kind of help it along. You just wanna be careful that you don't uh, tear the edges of your paper as you go. So I'm gonna, just gonna give this a little bit of help, gradually lift it off of the surface. And I wanna be careful not to tear it along the way. Um, if it gets really dry, um, sometimes it'll just lift off of itself. You can also iron these. If you place like some newspaper or a towel, you can iron the surface um, to help that drying process and make sure it keeps really flat. And there you go. We have a nice piece of paper. When you're ready to clean up, 
One thing that's very important to remember is to not wash these things in your household drains. Um, and definitely never dump your slurry down the drain. What you can do to preserve this is to run it through a sieve to collect as much as you can and then dry that out for later use. Um, because it's already blended, pretty much all you would need to do is rehydrate it and then right, add it right back into your slurry. I recommend getting a secondary tub or buckets to wash out all of your materials um, and then dumping that water into your compost or outside somewhere. But don't put it down your drain. I hope you've enjoyed learning how to make paper with mushrooms, um, but I want to encourage you to not just stop there. There's so many cool things that you can do with handmade paper. Um, so experimenting with color and the kinds of mushrooms that you use is wonderful, and I encourage everybody to try things. Um, you can also try different materials, not just mushrooms. You can even make paper from a can of tomato soup. You can also add things into your paper. In this piece, I've added lichen to get different colors um, within the texture. So it not only adds texture, but it also adds little speckles of black into that surface. Um, I've also added gesso and watercolor to paint onto the surface of this drawing. You can cast the paper onto any material that you like. So this is cast directly onto a piece of recycled um, polystyrene, and then that wet Pulp will just sort of stick to anything. In this piece, I put the paper directly onto, um, or the pulp directly onto bubble wrap to get this really cool honeycomb texture. And in this artwork, you can see how I've bent it around the piece of the styrofoam and made different shapes of it. And I'm also painting directly onto it. In this piece, rather than making paper, I just used the pulp itself like paper mache. And I added it to just this regular piece of styrofoam that was left over from packaging. So you can kind of see how it's thick and different. And then you can see some of my other artworks here that I've added um, mushroom pulp directly onto pieces of styrofoam. So I encourage everybody to experiment and have fun, and I hope you enjoyed this uh, demonstration about how to make handmade paper with mushrooms. Thanks for watching, and if you have questions, you can email me, but please check out my website at jesslangley.com.